Hey y'all, Corey here from Grow Ensemble, and in this Buy Ensemble video, we're gonna be reviewing the meat delivery service, Butcher Box. My goal in this video, as is the case with every one of our Buy Ensemble reviews, is twofold. First, help you to make the most informed people and planet-friendly purchases possible. And second, help push the conversation further with the community of businesses committed to doing business better, which I'd qualify as ButcherBox. The goal is to make and offer the most sustainable, positively impactful products and services possible. These reviews are just a summary of the research that I do or our team does behind the scenes. And if you'd like a better understanding of how we assess the sustainability of any one product or business, check out our full link, What Makes a Sustainable Product. Okay, let's get started. So I've divided what I will share with you here into two parts, performance and planet. Let's start with performance. For any one product or service to be sustainable, a key part of our assessment is how well does that product or service in question serve its intended purpose? It's been long thought that sustainable or eco-friendly products are compromises on conventional alternatives. Thankfully, I don't think that's the case anymore. You just need to find the right product. So as for Butcher Box, how has it lived up as a high quality meat delivery service? First things first, I have been an on again, off again customer of Butcher Box for a few years. I was very recently on, but now I'm making a transition, which I'll share more about later on. Uh, but here's a little how ButcherBox works, and in that I'll share with you my strategy as I've seen it to get the most out of it. So ButcherBox offers broadly two subscription plans, custom boxes and curated boxes, where you can get strictly beef and pork, beef and chicken, or a mixed box of everything. The custom box, you choose all your cuts. They say you get 20% more meat on these boxes, although the custom boxes start at a price 15% higher than the curated boxes. Even still, this is how I've gone for the greatest control on my box. All right, pricing breakdown. So the entry level custom box is 169, at least at the time of this recording. And ButcherBox says that gets you roughly nine to 14 pounds of meat or 30 meals. On the low end, nine pounds equals $18.78 per pound. On the high end, 14 pounds is gonna equal $12.07 per pound. Whether that's a good deal or not definitely depends on the cuts of meat you're getting, right? Uh, ground beef at $12 a pound, it's pretty steep. Ribeye at just under $19 per pound, it's not bad. However, I think you can access the greatest deals once you're a member. Each time you prepare your next order, you don't have to, it can all happen on autopilot, but ButcherBox posts member-only deals sometimes for holidays or seasonal themes like summer grilling, and they'll cut prices significantly on some items. You can't predict which items and when, but if you get the base price box customer curated and take advantage of the member only deals, this is where you can take your overall price per pound of meats down. For example, at this moment, ButcherBox is starting to promote holiday specials with tenderloin, ribeye roasts, and turkey. Or you could buy a bulk deal on grass-fed burgers, which would be $6.70 per pound on uh, the grass-fed beef, which is a pretty good deal. So. Unless I really want something specifically, I keep the cuts down to the minimum required, avoid add-ons, and typically pick up the month-to-month -month member deals. For what it's worth, a household with two adults and one toddler who eats mostly bananas and mac and cheese, one box a month at roughly $240 per box, this is very based off of the member deals, that's kept our household comfortably fed with very minimal supplementation of beef, pork, or poultry from the grocery or farmer's markets. But Here's my overall experience. I think ButcherBox is a good, valuable, and convenient service. I really like a lot of their products. Our household is big on their pre-made meatballs, chicken nuggets, carnitas, a number of pre-cooked, pre-prepared items that, that make for whipping up really quick meals. But there's also been a lot of new meals I've cooked as a product of ButcherBox. I, I, I'd say you or someone in your house needs to enjoy cooking and learning how to cook new cuts of meat to get the most out of it and, and fully enjoy doing it because I enjoy this, so I, I have considered that aspect uh, being encouraged to cook some new things a, a major benefit. I've made a lot of incredible meals with butcher box cuts, ribeye steaks, pork tenderloins, great pork chops, brisket tacos. Uh, a word of warning, grass-fed meats are typically leaner. A ribeye from a grass-fed cow won't look the same and have the same marble as a ribeye from a corn-fed cow. Nonetheless, I found butcher box meats to taste great and when prepared correctly, 
be very tender and flavorful. And of course, we are assessing ButcherBox on its merits of high quality meats. And so comparing grass-fed beef to corn-fed or concentrated animal feeding operations, beef from there, that it doesn't really make much sense. So nonetheless, knowing that the, the meats I'm getting from ButcherBox are humanely raised without antibiotics, hormones, you know, whatever else, is, is a major benefit. I don't have the same confidence going to the grocery unless that would maybe be a Whole Foods, but that's not conveniently located for us and I prefer giving less money to Bezos where possible. But one thing I would say, packaging sometimes isn't all the way sealed. So I've had some messes in the fridge with drippings as things to frost. Uh, but if you put a plate underneath anything you're leaving in the fridge just in case, um, that, that shouldn't be a big deal. Deliveries for me always have been incredibly smooth and 100% of the time the meals have arrived still completely frozen. One drawback, as nature of ButcherBox's service, the supplied meats aren't local. Not only that, ButcherBox gets the majority of their beef from Australia. They do this, they say, because Australia has a more robust pasture race certification system. Given they're US based and they claim to be delivering products to doorsteps across America, I'd really prefer they find ways to invest more in US supplying farmers and regenerative ranchers. But what's the verdict? Is ButcherBox worth it? Is it a good choice? I'd say yes. I've been super happy with ButcherBox for the duration that I've been a customer. I think it takes some trial and error to find the specific cuts and products that you like best that they offer. Uh, I think you need to like cooking to really benefit from and enjoy having ButcherBox. But I, I would say if you're specifically looking for a convenient way to get high quality, more sustainably raised meats, I think ButcherBox is totally worth a try and a perfect introduction. However, this might be a differing of opinion with the folks at ButcherBox on how we rethink our food system, one of their stated missions, but I have to think where it's available, it's best to go more local. For example, when my wife and I were living in the Boston area, I opted for Walden Local, another provider who's focused on supplying from the best regenerative farms in New England, New York, and New Jersey, as they say themselves. But a little tinge of irony as ButcherBox is headquartered in Boston and while we lived in the area, it seemed more appropriate to go with another option. It isn't available everywhere, however, so it might take some research and more legwork of, of checking out your local farmer's markets. And so implied in that extra effort is some lost convenience. But if you want to give ButcherBox a shot, use the link growensemble.com backslash ButcherBox or check for a link in the description below. We receive a small commission at no extra cost to you, and that commission helps to support the production of this channel. But with that, let's move on to the second part of our review here and talk planet. I'm approaching this section planet as if I was a consultant and pitching ideas as to how from the outside looking in, might I recommend ButcherBox could take their impact and mission further. We could critique the worst practitioners in this context of industrial agriculture and livestock production all day, but that might not be as useful. So here we're focused on opportunity. And for a butcher box, that's opportunities, how they can continue to lead on changing culture in their industry and business broadly. Two final important details. You should know here at Grow Ensemble, when I say planet, we're really grouping things together, the social and environmental. Companies undoubtedly impact both, and as well issues of the environment, be it emissions, pollutants, or whatever else affect people. These are inextricably intertwined. And second, we gather our information here first as if we are consumers. While I would welcome conversations with folks at, at ButcherBox, we want to first build an understanding of the sustainability and impact from the same information everyone and anyone could access. Granted, most people aren't putting the hours of research in that we do, as it's our job, but hypothetically, everyone could find what we've found here. So without further ado, let's get to three opportunities from my perspective as to how ButcherBox could take their impact and commitments to sustainability further. First, sourcing. Bring farmers and suppliers front and center. On butcherbox.com, they write, we believe they, farmers, should earn fair and predictable living wages. We support farmers and fishermen of all walks of life, and we're dedicated to increasing racial equity in the industry. With that, I'm saying great, show me. Bring your farmers and suppliers and partnerships with them front and center. I would love to know who ButcherBox's supplying farmers are, what their partnerships look like. I've been so glad to see the growth and success of a brand like ButcherBox. I think that's what's both critical for the industry and our food systems broadly moving forward is that the success of brands like ButcherBox is as well distributed as it possibly can be to the folks whose work and stewardship makes this all possible. Let's issue spot correctly. 
It's not just the fact that all the special interest power and influence in food and agriculture in the U.S. is in favor of industrial agriculture and mass pesticide and herbicide applications that's bad, but it's that any special interest has outlandish control, power, and influence. Not to mention, it's no secret that farming and ranching in the U.S. especially has been a particularly grueling and unrewarding profession. So much so that the rate of suicide among farmers is three and a half times higher than among the general population, according to the National Rural Health Association, as was reported in the New York Times. Farmers face incredible financial pressure and do rather excruciatingly difficult jobs. I, I think in part, this is why less than 2% of our US population works on the farms now. Don't get me wrong, I see ButcherBox as a long list of organizations in farming and sustainability that they've offered support and resources. All that's great, and I don't think they should change that. They've also mentioned some supplying farmers in bits and pieces, but you have to do some deep digging to find any of that. To me, however, regenerative business is less so about how much of your profits you are donating versus how much of a positive impact and resources you can distribute as a result of your operations. So a new customer signs up for ButcherBox, making a $200 order, how much of that goes back to the farm? And so tactically for ButcherBox, maybe they could be more public with their partnerships with supply and farm, show how much they are paid, how long the agreements are, and share what distribution of those farms are smaller scale, family farms. They could list names, addresses, and websites of partnering farms so those farmers benefit, not just from the supplier vendor relationship, but can build a name and reputation for themselves that's not exclusively attached to or dependent upon ButcherBox. They could profit share with their supplying farmers on their specific products so that they can reinvest more into their own operations. I'd love to see ButcherBox pioneer a culture that not just supports farmers, but celebrates, rewards, and encourages farmers and the many stewards of our land and food systems. Frankly, with more equitable, ethical, and transparent businesses and operations, I think we'd have less need for the various charitable organizations and advocacy groups. And ButcherBox might be on all this already, but I just ask it becomes more public. It's one thing to say you believe in supporting farmers and treating them fairly. It's another to show exactly what that means. If you're setting the example and standard, then show it. Next, sourcing, bring it closer to home. ButcherBox claimed they were first on a mission to make higher quality meat more accessible to all. So let's do it. ButcherBox says they source the majority of their beef from Australia. The environmental impacts of that transportation aside, I can't help but feel a lot of benefit could come from ButcherBox investing more into US supplying ranchers. They justify the supplying decision by saying Australia's pasture rate certification system is more robust. But while this may be true for me, I can't help but think that there's even more opportunity to be a leader here for the food system in the US. This might be a differing of opinions on rethinking the food system, but along with high quality food, I believe changing our food system is also about proximity. And so as someone with this view, learning this about ButcherBox's sourcing was a little off-putting, especially as they say they've grown to be delivering ButcherBox's boxes on doorsteps all across America. And so there's something a little oxymoronic about that sentence for me when the majority of the beef comes from Australia. Given the fact that I can't find the word Australia on any of ButcherBox's privately labeled meats, I think they likewise might believe the optic, optics of that uh, to be uh, a little less than favorable. It sounds like most all of their other products, chicken, pork, and seafoods are coming from the US and Canada. But again, along our first point, I likewise think more transparency is needed to narrow that down even further. There's more detail along the lines of their seafoods, but the US and Canada are big countries. If we want to connect people more with their food, then let's do it. This is a reason for me anyway why ButcherBox is great service, but if there are more localized options available or you have the time to do some of your local sourcing yourself, I, I think that would be the next step. Number three, transportation. First, I think that ButcherBox has done a great job with its packaging, all things considered. My box comes and the large majority of, of the all material, excluding the meat packaging itself, is able to be broken down and used as sheet mulching in my various landscaping projects. I do have to imagine that, that vacuum sealing meat, poultry, and pork has to be quite difficult to do without any plastic, but if someone's aware of any innovations there, do let me know. Shipping, again, the beef coming from Australia across the globe is one thing, but ButcherBox is likewise moving meat all over the country. The ButcherBox folks did an interesting write-up on measuring and managing their carbon impact. Apparently, they worked with a third-party consulting firm to do an assessment of their supply chain from start to finish, that being the box arriving on customers' doorsteps. 
and they found various opportunities to reduce transportation emissions. Certainly, kudos to ButcherBox for taking this initiative. But one of their most interesting observations was that hard to reach areas of the country, such as North Dakota, require customers to receive their boxes via air travel for the sake of speed. This ButcherBox says accounts for less than 1% of their total orders, but 10% of their total delivery carbon emissions. They concluded there wasn't anything else they could do about this, at least for now, so they continued talking about the carbon credits that they were purchasing. However, I, I, I hate to leave that 1% of those ButcherBox customers high and dry, but do we think there might be a more local provider? This is just one decision, but making business better and making your business better and more positively impactful is the compounding effect of countless courageous, sometimes seemingly small decisions. Here, I think there's a tremendous opportunity for ButcherBox to reconsider, or at least let us in a little bit more on their assessment as to how they and everyone else gain more from them serving that 1% of customers versus what we all lose from that potential 10% of their delivery emissions. Perhaps my take is a bit controversial, but hey, it's a climate crisis after all. We might have to make some courageous, seemingly counterintuitive business decisions by yes, even turning down some customers for the sake of what's better for the greater whole. And carbon credits aren't yet proving themselves to be the offset that we all have desperately hoped for. For the time being, we have to acknowledge that one ton of carbon dioxide sequestered through carbon crediting just doesn't seem to be equal to have not emitted that ton of carbon dioxide in the first place. Again, maybe a wild thought, but for customers that ButcherBox can't serve, maybe they could lead by offering a connection with a local provider. North Dakota, for example, the hard to reach location they reference is home to Gabe Brown, one of the most staunch public advocates for regenerative agriculture, after all. I can see his ranch, located in Bismarck, North Dakota, sells grass-fed beef. Also, as some of the best solutions can address multiple problems, without intimately knowing ButcherBox's global supply chain, maybe sourcing from more U.S. ranchers could shorten the distance and need for speed of air travel to get to harder to reach doorsteps across the country. Again, I think ButcherBox is a great service and an excellent first convenient step into purchasing high quality, more humanely raised, sustainable meats. Of course, from the outside looking in, there's still a lot of opportunity, I, I believe, for ButcherBox to lead and deliver on their stated mission to use their business as a force for good and rethink our food system. And I'll, I'll humbly admit these are probably things already on the minds of folks at ButcherBox, but if you or someone you know represents ButcherBox and believe I got some things wrong or, or don't have the full picture, please don't hesitate to comment or reach out directly. I'd be thrilled to make an amendment or follow up uh, with some other content of some kind. And once more, if you'd like to, to give ButcherBox a try, go to growensemble.com backslash ButcherBox or check for a link in the description below. We receive a small commission, no extra cost to you. That commission helps support the production of re reviews just like this. Lastly, suppose you enjoyed what you learned in this Buy Ensemble review. In that case, I'd encourage you to sign up for my weekly newsletter, The Weekly Ensemble, where together with social entrepreneurs from all over the globe, I explore the art of living and working sustainably. To get the next newsletter in your inbox, go to growensemble.com backslash newsletter. All right, y'all.